Puget Sound, a treasure passed down from one generation to the next. Puget Sound is an interesting place because I think when you look out at it, it's beautiful and you see, you know, what seems to be pristine waters and abundant wildlife. Washington is a great place. Think about it. It's got orcas, it's got salmon, it's got trees, it's got beautiful water. I can go sailing, I can go fishing, I can go diving. You look around you and it's so beautiful and, and yet there's so much that's going on underneath the water here. But even up here we've been heavily impacted by pollution and other things. High above forests and farmland, towns and cities, the waters of Puget Sound are born, sparkling and pure. But as these drops gather into streams, rivers, lakes and bays, they pass from wilderness through civilization. And along the way, bits of our world contaminate it. If you think of all of our little communities that are sort of perched on the edge of Puget Sound. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of places across the region. The biggest problem is what we call surface runoff. Think about all the times it rains and all that runoff from our roads. It's parking lots and it runs sideways. It picks up all types of nasty contaminants on its way to Puget Sound. It's this non-point pollution problem. It's this multitudes of sources. You know, you don't know if it's pet wastes, if it's fertilizers, if it's septic systems, if it's agricultural runoff. Lead, uh, mercury, copper, arsenic from brake pads, you know, things that things that all of us every day contribute from our own personal activities. That's 150,000 pounds of toxics on a daily basis. When humans start developing a landscape, the natural filtration system and natural cycles that vegetated areas like grasses and forests provide are lost. The stories of my family, um, you know, they've always been fishers, fishermen, and um, the, most of the stories are, are about how things used to be, and um, when there were a lot of fish. In 2005, 30,000 acres, somewhere around 30% of our growing areas were restricted to harvest due to pollution. We've got fish with tumors on their livers in Elliott Bay. We hear um, advisories that we shouldn't eat salmon more than once a week if we catch them in Puget Sound. We just had a report that seven orcas are, are missing, presumed dead, in the, in the last month. We have on occasion have, had the opportunity to work up necropsies, like an autopsy, on the, um, well, I think one southern resident killer whale and one transient killer whale, and both of them did have very, very high toxin levels. They're probably two of the most toxic um, entities on the planet right now. Even though we have 83 of them, we only have about 20 or so that are reproductively active females. So that's it actually shrinks the population when you think about that. And losing two of those is really, really a bad thing. Clearly, Puget Sound's in distress. Clearly, Hood Canal is in distress. And, um, and it's been declining for years. We have heard projections Puget Sound wide for uh, another one and a half million people moving to the region over the next 20 years or so. And of course, that means populations will increase out here in the rural areas as well. We have to recognize that, and we all have to be uh, participants in, in stewardship of, of water, of land, of, of natural resources that, uh, that we are going to depend on into, you know, way out into the future. So if we're thinking about just ourselves and we, you know, we become a me generation, we're in trouble. How can we grow? and have businesses that are supported that are local and not lose all these natural ecosystem benefits that we like. Puget Sound Partnership has a huge task ahead of them and I think they've worked really hard on creating an agenda that people could sign on to and recognize in their own lives, whether it be day-to-day -day home life or their work life, where they can plug in and make a difference. I think that the Puget Sound Partnership has really made a huge effort to reach out across the sound to people uh, in all walks of life. I think they've done a good job at bringing lots of different voices to the table and that the action agenda really reflects that. Well, the action agenda is organized around these four sort of basic fundamental questions that um, had never really been asked or answered in a meaningful way. The first one is what is a healthy Puget Sound? We really wanted to crystallize that and say to the public, this is what we're trying to have. We're trying to have a healthy food web. We're trying to have a healthy, prosperous economy. We're trying to have healthy orca whales. The second question is, where are we today? And what are the biggest threats facing the sound? Question three is, what do we do to get from point A to point B from today to what we want, which is a healthy, robust sound? And then finally, question four is, where do we start? We think we really need to start fast and, and get 
get going and show that we can actually pull this off in Puget Sound. No, we want to be out on the beach, we want to be enjoying, we want to be swimming in clean water, we want to be enjoying wildlife, we want to be eating fresh locally harvested salmon or fresh locally harvested oysters and clams, and that's a vision I think that everybody can buy into. We've made our living and committed our soul to this earth here. That's our future. Uh, it's our past and it's our future.